Hello everyone, it's Linda from Linda Z's in Arlington Heights, Illinois, ready for some fun little ideas and a little bit of inspiration. We are going to share with you today some really fun things. I'm not actually going to sew today. I want to show you some things about fabric uh, backings. I also have some really cool batiks and behind me is a phenomenal antique vintage quilt that I want to tell you a little bit about and then I have some really great notions but before I get started I everybody always asks well what are you wearing you know I love to take my even quilting designs and put them on a garment now this is a cutwork design that's just on a linen you can kind of see it's just a little half shell jacket real simple to do with the cutwork on it it's uh, got you know a little collar slit down the middle and then I'm going to turn around and if you can get it up close on the back, you can see this could be done with any quilting design if you want to do a, quilt, a cut work. So you can see the back, the way it kind of flares out a little bit. I made, this was made, oh gee, at, have you got it Nick or am I done? <laughs> okay, This was made at least, oh, I'd say eight or ten years ago. It's that, I mean it's one of these things that are timeless, it never goes away. And to the point where um, I forgot what design it was. And I know one of you, thank you, I think it was Karen called last week and wanted to know, I don't know, it was maybe a couple weeks ago, the design that I had on my shirt the last time. And the one that I did, one of a lot of my videos, I'll do things that are built into the machines because then, of course, we can remember them. But wouldn't be a great idea to, when you have a design you like, maybe even on the inside, make a little tiny um, embroidery down at the name of the uh, design so you remember where it is it's in my stash somewhere you know I've I have buckets of these um, embroidery designs everybody says you can never have too much fabric well you can never have too many designs they are they're always ones that you want to pull out and use and you can see I it's actually cut work it was um, you could do this on the brother I know I did this one on the Foth and the new icon is just wonderful because you can literally cut the it cuts it and then it satin stitches it over for you afterwards. So some really wonderful ideas. And then the shirt that I have on is just a design. This is actually in one of the um, Brother multi-needle machines. And then I put the little crystals on it. See, it just, it's just a very lightweight uh, knit shirt. So I think most of you know what stabilizer would you use if you're doing this on a garment and it's a knit fabric. You're right, the no-show mesh or it's called the um no show mesh plus or something but it's no show and it's fusible the more that you can fusible fuse the better and i use the water side the wet and gone on here because this is going to wash away when i have the opening for the cutaway and then again that's a whole um different technique that we uh, cover a lot of times in our embroidery clubs so, so those of you that aren't in our club 21s now it's going to be club 22 it's just starting we're going into the fall and that's when we do our new clubs get in them i i do you know i, I probably shouldn't even tell them i'm going to admit, admit a little secret i had to go back on one of our clubs the other day because i was making i won't tell you what but i was making something and honestly you know i probably have 150 to 200 designs uh projects easy a year that i do in these different videos and um i quite frankly couldn't find my notes or where i put it so i just went back to our embroidery club because we had done a step by step in there and sure enough it was there and i was able to finish what i wanted to do so i hope you'll really use them you know you can go back at any time that's the beauty of using that um, of course those of you that are local, we still want you to come into the store. There's nothing better than seeing hands on. We've been back doing our events this fall. We've got some phenomenal events coming out. Um, we have quite a few with Floriani, with OESD, Kathy, or Kelly Rushing is coming back, which we're just thrilled about. So look into the hands on. The videos, I think, are just wonderful for refreshers. And that's why I try not to go too long, although it's kind of hard sometimes. So I'll keep it a little short today. I just want to make sure that you really are getting inspiration and you're using what we're teaching you. I'm going to start with this beautiful quilt. I, I have shown this before in one of my videos, but I don't know if you've really seen it. And I'm going to put it up here so you can see it. I'm going to spread it out. And if you can see these individual, 
These are all beautifully um, batiked. They're hand batiked, they're stamped, and they are then they're done in India. These fabrics I found in a little batik place that was called Studio Bagru. It's not that little actually. They are known all over the world now. They're helping women that are very creative people. You can find it on Instagram and it's Studio B-A-G-R-U. And this panel, none of this was finished. These are not perfectionist quilters. If you look up close, let me see if I can find one. Okay, look at this, the way it comes together here. If you can see that, it definitely does not meet. Um, it's not perfect. This one is a little more perfect. This one isn't, look at there. But see, these were all done, they were literally stitched by hand. And then what I did is I bought the panel. It was just so beautiful. I, I mean, where would you ever find these hand, well, they're hand blocked and hand stamped. And, the, and why it's called a vintage and it's an antique is because these actual blocks are hundreds of years old. And they stamp this and with ink and with dye. They're in a pan, they go on it and put it on. It's just an amazing procedure. I actually have a video of them doing this. At some point, I will put this on one of ours. I just think it's great for people to see it. I made a scarf when I was doing this. And the, the reason that I did this is because I think, um, Nikki, are you back here on my? Yes. Okay, because I want to show them. Um, the, um, the backing is actually, the fabric here, you can see it a little bit when I bring it up like this, is actually a newer batik. It's one well, newer, it's, um, this is made in Bali. And I used our fabric for the backing because these fabrics that are on the front are literally, each fabric has been hand stamped and hand blocked with antique blocks. They're wooden blocks that these men have carved. They're amazing artisans who have gone in, their family after family after family after generation knows how to do this. They don't teach them, they just, you know, they learn by seeing their fathers and grandfathers and whatever do this. And so these are really priceless. And so I wanted to take this and bring it home and have it as a lap quilt. I um, have many, many batiks. We have a batik room in our store. And those of you that are interested, because we carry a very, very large um, summary of uh, batiks. And those of you really want some unusual batiks, you can call our store and any of the staff there will be more than willing to FaceTime you and go on to each fabric bolt or they'll find a way to make sure that you see it. And they will literally show you the blocks and they'll pull the, the um, fabric out at the same time and then they can cut you a yard. Always get, I personally, I only do two, yard, two to three yards. I will never do under that anymore because I go back to get it and it's gone and you'll never find them again. So I just wanted to bring this up and then I'm gonna turn it back over and I maybe will go up close if you can see it again. And do you see the, the, the uh, quilting that we did on this? We did machine quilting. I left this one here. I didn't want to cut it off yet because I wanted you to see it is very kind of meandering. This is all done by uh, free motion. It's not a um, real heavy design because the, we really wanted the batiks themselves to show up. The uh, quilting is just really to hold the pieces together and kind of give a swirly design of what the um, antique piece is. Look at this one, the way they put the little yellow and uh, green dots in there. I mean, just really, really special. And again, when you see the blocks, the way they were put together, you'll never find anything. They're so unique. And now, Nick, if we, as long as I'm talking about this, if we can go to the quilt in behind me, because this is phenomenal. This quilt is, I think, uh, now this is mine. I, I'm going to put my Laura Star down here for a minute. You know, I love this iron, but um, <clears throat> it's in the way here. If you can get in on this real close, you will see that this is all hand stitched. The, um, let me get out of the way, can you see? The little, on the red one, I don't know if you can get that line going up, but those are all hand stitches. And this is not like our quilts that we normally find or we would do today. Again, these are blocked pieces of fabric that have been hand stamped. And then they put these pieces together and some artisan has sat there and done all of the hand quilting. They don't do the binding like we do. 
And I'm going to turn it over, Nick, if you can um, get that up. And look at what they do with the back. They've taken all these beautiful fabrics and they put a purple, they put an orange. If we go way up, you can see there is a red, green. I mean, it's just, the back is almost as pretty as the front. I, um, you probably have heard me talk about this before, but what has done with many of these quilts is um, there are certain designers in New York and actually there's a wonderful group in North Carolina and they will take, they, the only way you can get these quilts is to physically go to India. And of course you do not want to do that now. There's a tremendous outbreak over there still. Um, but those quilts are hand done by all of these women and then these designers bring them back and they make these beautiful coats and jackets and you couldn't find a jacket from one of these designers for under 5,000. And they are in a real heavy demand. It's amazing to me. So if you're really gonna make something really wonderful and the construction is not heavily um, tailored or anything. In fact, it's very loose and very drapey because it, the fabric speaks for itself. So that gives you a little bit of an idea. Now, people have asked me about the backings on fabric and I wanna talk about that over and above what I just did. If you look at the ironing board over here, my lo lovely Laura Star, we're gonna put this back on here so we can see it now. These are Moda fabrics. We have a huge selection of um, 108 inch fabrics that, and, and again, I, I, if you're a new quilter, I know a lot of people are gonna ask, well, what would I do that for? These are the polka dots, by the way. I think they're just scrumptious. And uh, we've got a black one here too. It's black and gray. I think it's um, just really, really beautiful. Very, very rich. This would be so pretty. You could even use it on the back of something like this. I mean, it's just a wonderful piece. But the reason why you would use a 108 inch fabric, and look at when I take it out here. <clears throat> look at the other side, it's a, an ombre. So it is just, it, see how it changes? Let me move it out a little bit so you can see it. It's not just the one color. And I would imagine, I think the others are like that too. Can you get that up close? This is just beautiful. This is the side you'd want to use. It goes from a smoky black to a taupey um, soft gray. I mean, just scrumptious colors. And this would be gorgeous on any quilt because it's very small. It's not a real big, intense design. Although I have sure seen some of your quilts where you've been doing real heavy, big designs on the backs of the quilts and it, they're really wonderful too. But this will give you a very, very rich look it would be just fabulous for um, um, a masculine, a men's or a brother. Actually, I'd love it myself, but in any, I mean, it's a very, very uh, designer look that would be just wonderful on the back of any quilt. And let me, well, you know what? Let me roll one of these out. Do we have enough time, Nick, for me to <laughs> do one more? Okay, okay, it's gonna take away from my notions, but I wanna show you this. <laughs> look at this one. Now, those of you that are purple lovers, you're gonna go crazy with this because look at this. It is just out of this world. It goes from very, very dark to very, very soft and uh, kind of a brighter, almost not really a lavender, but um, almost a periwinkle. So really, really um, wonderful shades of ombre that would be just wonderful on any kind of a quilt. And again, making it a real, real designer look. So I hope you'll give these some thoughts. Uh, Teresa, will we have these on the uh, website? Can we? <laughs> I know, they just came in. She's going, what? <laughs> they literally just came in the door and I wanted to show them to you as quickly as I could. I think we'll get them on there by the time this um, video is ready to go because I want you to be able to have some, and just the feel of them. You know, I wish you could feel them because they're just ab absolutely wonderful. The um, <clears throat> great part on the reason I mentioned earlier about if you're a new quilter, you wonder, well, why would I use 108 inch fabric? You don't have to seam. If you have a larger, anything wider than 44 inches, which is most fabric backings, you on this 108 inches will take over the whole entire quilt. So you really don't have to put a seam in it. And that sometimes is really nice when you wanna create a real smooth look. Now, again, when you want to do a designer look, like is the quilt in the back of me, that probably has 10 different seams. And 
you know, different patches and everything. And that again is another look that I think is really great. So it, the great thing about quilting and backings is that you get to make your own decision. I would never ask somebody to make it for you. It's your quilt. This is what you want to really look at and feel and maybe give away. And so you want to really make it to personalize to you. Okay, I think I have about three minutes for notions. <laughs> so I want to show this first because I was grilling. I wasn't really grilling. I was taking the, my husband was grilling, and I was taking the pants out of from the grill. And I thought, you know, wouldn't this be great to have my own size, my own, because sometimes they're way too big for me. And then for my husband, sometimes they're not big enough. And these are just fabulous because they are that um, um, Teflon look, the silicone, that of course will not burn. And it comes with it. And then, see how nice these are? And then you can take on the back. Now this is actually the, the uh, silicone itself. And this one, I think we've got two packages here, is with the silicone, um, uh, it's got the, all the patterns and designs and everything. So there's, uh, and then of course you can make your own thing at the bottom. Um, I think this is just a, um, this is where you get the pattern. And then if you wanna add and make two or three other mitts, you'd wanna buy a second one like this. Um, you don't need to keep buying the pattern. You buy that once and then you buy the refill, so to speak, afterwards. Somebody asked me about one of my favorite scissors again. Um, these are still in the package, but they are, these are that Karen, uh, Karen K. Buckley. I mean, KKB is what we call them. And they, she always signs them. And the handles are just so comfortable to use. Uh, Mary, our manager always says, and I totally agree with her, that anytime a new scissor comes out, you know, she always inspects it and says, if it's a good one, I'll, I'll buy it. I, I have scissors at every one of my machines. I don't like to have to run over to this machine, over this machine, and I carry those little um, holders that I think they're called, um, uh, what are they called, Teresa? <laughs> those little things you put the um, all of your notions yeah. into, stuff and totes or, I don't know, something really cool. Um, these are Fiskars that are the limited edition with the different colors. I think they're very soft and they're kind of nice too. Um, they're, you know, I'm always a firm believer in buying your very first scissor with the best quality you can buy. And I love Ginger. I've always loved them. They're just a European quality of texture and, and tailoring that you'll never get anywhere else. So everyone should have at least one pair. The new um, Gingers, the ceramic handles that are coming out are still not here. I've mentioned them in other videos and I think it'll be closer to September. But those of you that are the collectors of those, should call our store and they will put you on the wait list because you will get them then. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you, because you know I do so much with stabilizer, and I have some tear away here, and you've seen this maybe on one of our notions. We're going to be having our big um, Madison show here um, in September, not too far off, and I hope you'll watch it because it's really going to be a wonderful one that's going to be showing all kinds of things like this, and we'll have a lot of notions in there. We'll have some of the um, top um, educators that are going to be coming in. I know I think Pam Mashey will be here. Uh, quite a few people that are going to do some really unique things on different sewing machines that are going to show you from primarily Bernina. We carry a lot of Bernina in this show, the long arms, the sit downs. But when I do a lot of the embroidery work, um, you know, you've seen me cut it in here. And you see what I'm doing? Because you don't want this thing flopping around in your your stash of stabilizer or wherever you put it. You want to be able to take a little piece like this and put it over there and then I just label it. There's a label right on here. Getting inside, because I used to do that with a magic marker, is really awful. I might do three little initials and then that's real quick. But if you put it on here, it's so easy to put it on afterwards. And they're called the Nifty Notions, um, I guess stabilizer holders. That's that's what I would hold use them for. Um, I have patterns here. There's a festive, a tango tote that I think is wonderful and bark. I'm not going to have time to show you. The um, template set, this is the Oregon Trail. I don't know, Nick, if they can get up close on this. Can I they see that? I think it's really pretty. I don't know if it's kind of shiny because of the plastic, but really a nice template. 
Um, here, I'll show you quickly these patterns up close. This is one that's a um, <clears throat> cute one. Festive, I think that's a really great one. And Tango Tote. Okay. <laughs> I, oh, you can tell I'm not the camera host here. <laughs> and if you do this, what it'll do, um, if you like these, call the store. I'm not going to put all these on the website, but just call the store and they will go ahead and uh, show you what, what's really great. Two books that I think are great. One is Kaleidoscope. I think this would be so simple to do and so cute. I'll bring it up here. Maybe they can. Not that close? OK. <laughs> all right. There we go, Kaleidoscope. But I want to open it up because this shows you the, look at how fun that would be on a bed. I actually have a bed like very similar like this, and I've actually made that. This is kind of fun. Just showing you the designs. And these just have these wonderful soft peach colors that are so popular right now. And then for children, this kid's quilt, it's called Minis, and it's by Bradley Designs, and I just think it's great. Look at the space, the dinosaur, which is really fun. I mean, these are just really fun ones. So again, you can call and we will um, get them for you. I hope this has given you, again, uh, some ideas that you're gonna go out there. I know the hardest part is when you've got that quilt finished and then you think, oh, and you've got it all pieced. And now you go, oh, what am I going to do with the top? How am I going to put the backing on? How am I going to get it together? This is the fun part, choosing your backing, choosing your binding. Uh, enjoy the process. I mean, I always say when I get to that part, I'm way more than halfway through, and that's really the fun thing. So enjoy your week. I hope you're going to come back to us next week because we have some really fun things planned for you. Thank you, everyone, for coming and enjoying. Tell your friends we would love it. Uh, like us on our social media or however you do that. <laughs> Thanks again. Have a great week, everyone.